the future of the automotive industry. We have gone from electric cars in the late 1800s to gas-powered cars, and now we are in this weird phase where it seems most people agree that electric is the future of the automotive industry, but still we have companies like Fiat Chrysler that don't really seem to commit to this vision, and other companies like Toyota, as well as startups like Nikola, that have been investing heavily in hydrogen fuel cells. So. In this video, I wanted to take a closer look at the OEMs and figure out what they believe the future of the automotive industry looks like, and give my two cents on it as well. Currently, only about 1% of those watching my videos are subscribed, and if you wouldn't mind, you can subscribe down below, it's free, and you can always unsubscribe. It's interesting to me that the first car was electric, and when it got commercialized, it was changed to run on gas. It is difficult to pinpoint the exact reason for this, but it might have to do with Henry Ford's work on mass production for the Model T. The gas-powered cars could be manufactured for less, and they could go further than the electric counterpart. It was an easy choice for Henry Ford, and the electric car would be wiped out for nearly 100 years. That brings us on to today, where we are seeing different options on what the future of fuel sources for cars will look like. But one thing that is agreed upon and can be said objectively is that we can't use fossil fuels indefinitely. Not only because of climate change, but the undeniable fact that we simply don't have unlimited supplies of oil. So even though you don't believe in climate change, the world still has to transition to something different. So let's take a look at the options the automakers have available. First, we have electric cars, and just like in the 1800s, these will need to store the energy they need in batteries. Historically, batteries haven't really been a viable option for cars, since they simply didn't have the energy density needed to compete with the gas-powered cars. That is until we had a battery breakthrough that came in the form of a lithium-ion battery. That battery made it possible to make the computers, cell phones and electric cars that we have today. And we will have to thank this guy, John B. Goodenough, for this breakthrough. And no, I won't be making any jokes regarding his rather interesting last name, but you should remember him, I will come back to him later in the video. Going back to the lithium-ion battery, it allowed car manufacturers to make electric cars. But they chose not to, and the only real explanation for this is don't change what is not already broken. Here I am obviously talking about the amount of profits ICE cars was allowing them to generate not only through sales, but most importantly through servicing and maintenance. If you didn't know, ICE cars have a lot more moving parts than their electric counterparts. That means more things can break, and that also means the longevity of the vehicles is generally shorter. So it came as a surprise when a startup company called Tesla came out with an appealing electric car compared to anything that had come before it and most importantly it looked like a real car instead of those gimmicky electric cars that we have seen in the past. All this made it able to compete in the market and actually became car of the year according to Motor Trend. But the OEMs along with Wall Street analysts laughed at Tesla and the automaker saw no interest in building electric cars at the time and definitely didn't see Tesla as a competitor. But it all seemed to come crashing down when Volkswagen went through the biggest scandal in the history of automakers. Dieselgate was so brutal that top executives at Volkswagen were imprisoned for breaking the emissions laws. Not to mention the countless lawsuits from investors that saw massive losses when the news broke out, or the tremendous amount of fines that followed. Volkswagen was forced to somehow make up for this scandal, so they suddenly began pushing for a greener, more sustainable form of transport. Funnily enough, electric vehicles was the obvious choice for Volkswagen, so that is what they wanted to pursue. But they faced one problem. Tesla, the company they had previously completely ignored had become the market leader in electric vehicle technology. Volkswagen suddenly had to make a car that was able to compete with Tesla's vehicles, and not vice versa. It took them some time and a new CEO to figure out what they should do. But finally, they announced that they will spend over 34 billion on electric vehicles by 2023. Even though it is the most ambitious plan we have heard from a legacy automaker, you have to understand they don't have a choice. Both the Dieselgate scandal and the tightening of regulations regarding emissions play the biggest roles in this change for Volkswagen. But what about other auto manufacturers? 
What are their plans regarding the transition to electric vehicles or sustainable transport? Well, virtually all car manufacturers have announced some plans to transition to sustainable transport, though many manufacturers only offer one or a couple of electric vehicles to the US market. And amazingly, they are all losing money on them, except for Tesla. To get up to speed, here are the auto manufacturers that currently sell EVs in the US. What is common for these auto manufacturers, except for Tesla, is that they sell very few of their electric cars in the US, and their electric car offerings just aren't appealing enough for customers, so the automakers have chosen to offer the vehicles at a loss to try to compete with the likes of Tesla, even though price cuts don't seem to work. So what other options does automakers have in sustainable transport if they want to stay relevant in the coming years and decades? Well, you might have noticed that Toyota wasn't a part of the automakers that offer electric vehicles in the US. And there is a reason for that. Toyota has been putting all its research and development money into hydrogen fuel cell technology. They strongly believe that they could make it viable for the masses to drive hydrogen powered cars. So they developed the Toyota Mirai, which is a mid sized, very expensive sedan that is only offered in California and Hawaii, since those are the only places you can fill it up. Not so convenient when compared to Teslas that can charge anywhere, you literally just need an outlet. And it's not only inconvenient, it's expensive too. You have to pay approximately $85 to fill up your Mirai. In comparison, you only need to pay $0 to fill up your Tesla if you have solar panels at home. Or if you are at a supercharging station, you pay around $18 depending on location, time of day, and so on. It's not surprising Toyota has only sold 10,000 units in its 5-year production run, as of December 2019. It's interesting to me that Toyota would offer a vehicle and not a way to fill it up. Instead, they rely on third-party companies to open up more hydrogen fueling stations compared to Tesla who took the challenge and has opened thousands of supercharging stations around the world and counting. While we are on this topic of Tesla, Elon Musk has famously called hydrogen fuel cells mind-bogglingly stupid. Hydrogen fuel cells are ridiculously inefficient compared to electric cars. Hydrogen has to be created somehow, stored, fueled, and converted into electricity before it can be used, so it only has around 25% efficiency, compared to electric vehicles that have around 80-90% to efficiency. I think cost is the main thing though, if you can produce your own electricity at home for free, why would you pay for gas, or in this case hydrogen? And also, the Mirai is ridiculously expensive. The Tesla Model Y is an objectively way better car in every single aspect, even if it costs the same as a Mirai. But it doesn't, it's approximately $20,000 cheaper. So currently, there is no incentive to purchase a hydrogen fuel cell powered car, and I don't think there ever will be. You see, batteries keep improving. And sometimes we have big breakthroughs that allow us to dramatically improve upon battery technology. Last time it was lithium ion and now we are expecting to see the next battery breakthrough within the next 5 years. And possibly way sooner than that. Interestingly, we already know what that breakthrough will be since we already have it, it's called a solid state battery. And believe it or not, this is what we are all waiting for, including Toyota. Currently, we have solid state batteries in things like pacemakers, but the batteries have the potential to increase current industry leading energy densities by 2.5 to 10 times. So let's take a 2.5 time improvement in energy density and put it into context. Currently, a Tesla Model 3 has a WLTP rating for 322 miles. If you increase the energy density in the battery by 2.5 times, the car would be able to go about 800 miles on a single charge. Or, I guess more importantly, you could make the battery pack 2.5 times smaller, which would dramatically decrease the cost of manufacturing the Model 3. This would make the Model 3 way cheaper than any other ICE car, and certainly any hydrogen car. What's interesting is that whenever this gets figured out, it's no longer a question whether or not electric, hydrogen or gas is the overall better fuel source. It's a question of how quickly can we manufacture these batteries, because the whole world will run on them. From cell phones to cars, airplanes, boats, you name it. 
they will be everywhere. So the battery supply will be very limited compared to demand, which will make them expensive at first, and then gradually become cheaper as production increases. Currently, all auto manufacturers have battery supply chain issues since electric vehicles require a lot of cells to make a battery pack. This is why you have seen major automakers such as Audi and Jaguar holding production because of battery supply chain issues. And we will have this problem for years into the future until we improve the manufacturing process as well as the energy density. So we don't need as many battery cells per vehicle. And honestly, I have heard so many people discredit electric vehicles because they want to see a ridiculously long range before they get impressed and would consider buying one. I've heard people demanding a car that can go at least 8000 miles and let me just come on the record now and say I'm sorry but that is most likely never going to happen. There is absolutely zero sense in making such a vehicle. Even though we had the technology to do so, no consumers would need that many miles and if you go on a long road trip once a year to, I don't know, Miami, you can charge on the way. And don't worry, charging times along with energy density will improve greatly over time, so it practically won't be a problem. And currently it really isn't. I would personally like to have a break from driving if I had driven 300 miles and I don't believe I am alone in that. But when will these batteries come and who will figure it out first? Well, it is a tough question to answer, but if I had to give my best bet, I would expect to see something very interesting on Tesla's battery investor day on the 22nd of September. Will it be the solid state battery? Possibly but I am expecting them to have some type of breakthrough that will further extend the advantage electric vehicles have over ice and hydrogen fuel cells. So what will the future of the automotive industry look like and who will survive? Again, it is a tough question, but my guess is that hydrogen will become a great failure and those who spend too much time on it will go down with it, including Nikola, the fortunate company that I actually made a video on. You should go and watch it. I'll link it here and down in the description. But anyway, hydrogen just isn't viable and if you disagree, that is completely fine and it will be interesting to see how all of this will turn out. But it is very apparent that we are about to see a major shift in the automotive industry and those who aren't prepared will fall. Thank you guys so much for watching, this has been Oliver Bale and the future of the automotive industry. If you liked the video, please comment down below and tell me what you thought about it. I will look forward to your response and I will see you in the next one.